Uh, hello everyone, this is Al Fadi and I uh, want to welcome you back to a continuation of this new series on more Meccan problems simply because we are coming across more and more evidence courtesy of Dr. J. Smith and his team that disproves the standard Islamic narrative. Let's say, uh, you know, basically that it proves the holes in the narrative uh, actually uh, uh, you know, facts and, the, uh, you know, basically we're not finding any evidence that can co corroborate the idea that Mecca existed when the standard Islamic narrative said it existed. We're not finding evidence to corroborate some of the traditions about, for instance, when we showed you the burial sites of these prophets or many other things as we will continue to unpack these additional evidence. And we want to pick it up from here. Dr. J, welcome back. No, oh, Okay, thank you. So, that's the question, and obviously you and I know the answer, but we want our viewers to understand where these sources come from. Yeah, before we really get uh, unpack uh, Mecca, we've got to say, well, where, what are all the Muslims dependent on for everything they know? And what we're finding out is that it's not the best source. What do we talk? Let's just go back and I want to look at this map. Let's put this map up here uh, to show you what and uh, who is it that or where is it that the Muslims are going to. What they do is they always start with the idea that Muhammad uh, it was in this part of the world that I'm pointing to right here, this dark green here. See this dark green here? That is the area that existed during the time of Muhammad's lifetime. So nothing really was uh, controlled beyond that dark green area. I mean, there's just a little bit of Oman, but that's what you mean here is when Muhammad, according to the tradition, was living, these areas converted to Islam. Right. This is part of the the, uh, the empire at that time. Right. According to the standard Islamic narrative, that's what they are. Once he died, then Abu Bakr comes and he then controls this part here. So you see this part here. That's all then under his, there, his control. And he is from 632 to 634. So he brings the whole peninsula under his mm -hmm. jurisdiction. Uh, he dies peacefully. And then Umar and Uthman and Ali. So they're the last three of what we know as the righteous the, caliphs. Yeah, the Rashidun period. Rashidun, exactly. And that's this area here and this area here. So all of this now air part is under their control, this part right in here. So that's according to what Islam tells us, not history, but what Islam tells us. And then after Umar, Uthman, Umar is from 634 to 644, Uthman is from 644 to 656, and then Ali is from 656 to 661. So by 661, we're at roughly 40 years after the caliphate was inter inaugurated in 624, roughly 40 years later, that whole area, this whole swath of land mm -hmm. is under their control. The light green, the little bit green, and the olive green, and then the dark green. Now, once they die, then the Umayyads come over and they then enlarge the boundaries over here all the way to what is, well, Kabul. So that's Afghanistan in the east, all the way over to Spain, Andalusia, Andalusia was called them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what is Spain today over in the west. So that whole swath of land is what we're talking about. And this is the whole area up until 749. So we're talking in mid 8th century, the Umayyads are in control. 661 to 749. Life. Where do we go from here, brother? We're going to actually ask the next question, uh, which is, is there a history? And so let's go right into it because we do want to finish this off before. That. When you look at the Quranic references, just put them up there on the screen. The Quranic references, if you look there, are only, well, there's only one. As I said earlier, it's only one place. Chapter 48, verse 24. Mm -hmm. And he it is who hath withheld men's hands from you and hath withheld your hands from them in the valley of Mecca after he had made you victors over them. Allah is here of what do you do? What does that tell you? Not to tell you much other than the fact that Mecca is in a valley. Is Mecca in a valley? Well, I mean, uh, if it is a valley, it's a flat valley, that's for sure. <laughs> it's, that would not what I would call a valley. And of course, that's it. That's all we know about Mecca from the Quran. If this is such an important place, if it is the greatest, uh, his, uh, the oldest city in history, it's where Abraham was, it's where all the prophets are buried, at least 300 of the prophets are buried, then why is there only one reference to it in the Quran? And really, the reference we have doesn't tell you much at all from what we do know about Mecca. But more than that, Dr. Patricia Corona found this. She said the earliest, and let's go back to this to the slide here, that the earliest reference we can find for the city called Mecca is the Apocalypse of Pseudomethodius with Continuatio uh, Byzantia Arabica. This is from 741. 
She cannot find any reference until this day. Now, she introduced this back in 1987 when she wrote in Mech and Trade and the Rise of Islam. So it's been out over 20 years. In fact, uh, well, we're talking about 30 years. It's been out and still no Muslims have been able to find something better than this. Find right. a reference that's earlier than the Methodius continue out of Byzantium out of Arabica from 741. Show me a reference that's earlier. They can't find it. Which right. suggests in 30 years, if they can't find it, they're not going to find it in the next 30. So you've got to go with this as the earliest reference. Muhammad died in 632, according to the standard Islamic narrative. If it doesn't get to introduce as a reference point until 741, when is it put on any map? It's not put on a map until 900 AD. We don't see it on any map. We've done this before. We've already got this, so I don't want to repeat ourselves. But she didn't read enough. She didn't go far enough. Because when you read the entire uh, uh, pseudo Methodius Continuato uh, Byzantium in 741, you need to read the second part of that reference. She just was looking for the name itself. She didn't unpack it. What does it say afterwards? Well, it says, as they consider it, the home of Abraham, which lies in the desert between Ur of the Chaldeans, that's the magicians, and the Kara, the city of Mesopotamia. Hold on a minute. Why didn't pick, pick, uh, Dr. Crone pick this up? Mel from Sneakers Corner is a good friend of ours. We've used right. him, and he was the one that picked this up, and he said, hold on a minute. I'd like to know where this home of Abraham is. Now, today, we know the home of Abraham, Ur, is in southern Iraq. That's right. It's a land of Mesopotamia, the land between the two rivers, and that corroborate the biblical story. But not in the 8th century. Not in the 8th century. It was because of J.E. Taylor in 1853 who discovered Ur. That's in the 19th century. Before the 19th century, Ur was always between Edessa and Haran. Everybody mm -hmm. knows that if you look at any of the ancient annals, mm -hmm. including all the time from the 8th century. We're talking about the 8th century. Now, in the 8th century, look at this map here. And Ur was always known as between Edessa, Edessa and Haran. Here's Edessa and Haran, and that's where Mecca was. That's where Abraham came from. That's what this this inscription is talking about in 741. It's referring to that place. Well, where do you think that place is? That's in southern Turkey. Right? Southern Turkey. Right. That is nowhere near Mecca and Medina. It's nowhere near what we're what uh, is Muslims are telling us. So the original Mecca, according to the in the 8th century, the Mecca that they that this document is referring to is located in southern Turkey, where they believed at that time Abram has uh, came from. But it was because of J.E. Taylor, who, entered, who was the one that finally found uh, where Ur was. And that was in the 19th century. And then, of course, uh, we know that today, everybody that goes to southern Iraq, you will find that there. But uh, uh, you notice what, I, what, we, what we've been saying over and over again. In fact, it's getting boring. It is just too far north. And again, directly above, straight above north of what is the present day Mecca. But note what they are now doing. Let's look at this slide here. Notice what they're doing. Here's that clock tower that I said before. The world's the highest, fourth highest building, the world's largest clock, and also the, this, this, uh, they, they want to look at, they want to look like Big Ben there in England because they want to make it Mecca and Bean time. All this construction that's going on. Well, this is what, take a look at this slide. That's what they're looking for. That's what is going to be one of that's these. That's the four. master plan, basically. Yeah, and how it's going to look. One like. of these is going to be the one they're going to choose. So I'm showing you all four because we don't yeah. know where they're going to go with yet. But let me let me emphasize something. I mean, I am in uh, an engineer in the construction field. I spend uh, my career doing projects like this. To build high rises like this, it demands solid, strong foundations. That demands also digging deeper sometimes. You're going exactly where I'm going with. Take exactly. a look at the next slide. Right. That's exactly where I'm heading towards. See, this is what it looks like today. In fact, this is as the clock tower is being built. You can still see they're still constructing the top of the clock tower. So even when you were looking at this, take a look at all these cranes down here. All these cranes. Here's the Kaaba right there. Right. All these cranes around it. Whenever you build large building like what you're talking about, you've got to dig deep too, so that things don't tip over or don't fall over or uh, don't get deconstructed. Now, when you build, when you dig uh, foundations, you start to look for things. And of course, if you're an archaeologist, you want to be there at the table because all this material is coming out of what they're what they're digging. So, what are they digging? Well, Dan Gibson was at a conference a number of years ago when he asked this very question. And there were some Saudi Arabians. I understand they were sitting at the table with him. He said, what have you found with all of these artifacts? You're archaeologists. You have a museum there. Uh, there in Mecca and in the museum, you have all the artifacts that you have found from all these diggings. Can you tell me what the earliest things are? 
And as you notice, they were kind of sheepish. And the reason they could come up with anything, they said the best that they could come up with was an old Ottoman fort from after 1299. Look at the date, 1299. And that's when the Ottoman Empire, basically. When the Ottoman started, Empire. Yeah. This is an Ottoman fort from after the 13th century that they had found. Because it started in 1254, basically. That's so why Ottoman couldn't Empire. they find, well, take a look at this slide here. Why is there no history? Just look at these pictures. These are pictures from Mecca in the 1800s, 1900s. And you notice that they are bleak. There's, there's a desert. Why is this important? Well, stay tuned. We're going to get into that because that's the next episode. We're going to show you something that we have just begun to find about and something that we need to start throwing and asking Muslims to come up with. But that's for the next episode. Absolutely. And uh, as always, thank you so much, everyone, for uh, watching this. In fact, uh, we want to thank you uh, as you are watching this for your comments, your interactions. By the way, I don't know about you, Dr. J, but we receive a lot of wonderful comments and even suggestions by people sometimes pointing us to some articles, pointing us to some books, some references. Uh, and we welcome that all the time. We want to engage with you in discussions and dialogues. We're not here, by the way, to try to emphasize that it's our way or the highway. But at the same time, unless you can present us with anything, as uh, Dr. J mentioned about Dan Gibson's question to the Saudis, uh, asking them, hey, what did you find? Can you show us some artifact? This should be really a, a, a groundbreaking you know, discoveries if you found anything that points back to a 7th century, 6th century, 5th century, anything you know, that you can at least tell us that there was civilization, habitation, things that are taking place in there. And the only thing that they were able to point, uh, point out to was a Ottoman fort that was in 1299. I mean, that's a long way from 632, almost 700 years later. And again, as Dr. J mentioned, everything points north, points north. Mecca is not north, I can assure you of that much. Mecca is south. Iraq is north, Syria is north, Petra is north, Baghdad is north, everything is north. Turkey is north, Mecca is south. I think everybody today knows that. We need evidence from down south down under. We do not want it from up above. And sadly, we do not have anything. And that's why I want to really uh, go out on a limb and say, I want to commend actually Dr. Yasser Qadi for taking, having the courage to say there are holes in the narrative. Because of that, we are taking a lot of deep dives, Dr. Qadi. Thank you so much. And brother, we thank you for your team, your effort, your research. This is groundbreaking. We're excited really about all of these discoveries because it's been helping a lot of us. I myself in my own PhD, I'm benefiting a great deal from those kind of discoveries one way or another. So thank you everyone for tuning in and until next time, have a blessed day.